Here I have a wave that is traveling to the right. If I let time pass, you can see the wave moves to the right because these crests are traveling across the screen. What about the particles? If you look at just one of these little beads and you follow its path, you see it only moves up and down. So if I pause, I could look at the displacement of every single particle on the string. We can quantify that type of analysis by getting some rulers. Okay, so this first particle, its equilibrium position is located at zero centimeters. This particle right here is located at about one centimeter. This particle is the one located at two centimeters and so forth. But we could look not only at the location or the distance of each particle from the zero, we could also look at each particle's displacement. See this dotted uh, orange line here? This represents the undisturbed position. And so when the particles have zero displacement, they are right on this line. This one is pretty close to zero displacement. Do you see any others? This, 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 and these two. What about this first particle? To measure its displacement, we would need to use, again, the ruler. And its displacement is about 246.8 centimeters. This particle, let's go to this one right here, is displaced only about 0.3 centimeters. And so we could track for each particle both this quantity, the distance that it's located, and also its displacement from the undisturbed position. That is exactly what these displacement distance graphs achieve. They tell us the displacement of every particle, and they identify the particles based on where they're located. What's their distance from the edge of the medium? Let's look at an example. Here is a displacement position graph. And it says a longitudinal wave passes through a medium. This is on page 18 of our notes. Below is the displacement position graph of the wave after some time has passed. The source oscillates with a frequency of 0.833 hertz. Again, you may see this written as position. The more common word IEB is using these days is distance on the x-axis. And it means the same thing. Where are those particles when they're undisturbed? The first question has us identify the period and they told us the frequency of the source, so we can easily find the period, because period is one over frequency. They also ask for the wavelength. Well, if I were to go back to my simulation here, I can see the wavelength by measuring the distance from crest to crest. It's the exact same in the case of this graph. This is a particle, and this represents another particle. So you can simply look at the distance from crest to crest. Similarly, you could look at the distance from this equilibrium location to this. Or you could look trough to trough. All you have to do is find two particles that are in phase. For example, this particle is at the top of its path, and this is at the top of its path. So these are in phase. Their oscillation, their up-down oscillation, is synchronized. Okay, we would find that value by looking at the x-axis. Next, we find the speed of the wave. Well, if we know frequency in lambda from the prior two parts, this is an easy question. Amplitude, hmm, let's go back to the simulation. If the particles are oscillating up and down, what is amplitude? It's how far any one particle gets from its, un, uh, its undisturbed or resting position. So this particle goes up all the way to there, and then it goes down all the way to there. We could get the amplitude then from this graph by looking at how far its displacement gets. How big is that displacement? Or in other words, what's the maximum displacement? So that's how we solve this question. To find the average speed, we need to realize that each particle if we let this thing run, let's take this in slower motion. This particle right 
here. There it is, this one right here. In order for it to make one full cycle, what does it have to do? It has to go down to the bottom, then it goes back up, then it goes up to the top, and then back down to its original location. How many amplitudes is that? It's four, and that occurs in one period. So if we let this progress, here it is, it's this one right here. It's gonna go down to the bottom. That's one amplitude right there. And it goes back up, and then it goes up and back to the middle. So four amplitudes in one period. Speed is distance over time. Oops. Distance over time. The distance traveled is four amplitudes over an interval of one period. Finally, part G. State the direction of the particle P at the moment shown. If I look back up at particle P, hmm, you might think we should go draw a tangent line, say, well, hey, the slope is negative. So this particle is moving to the left. But we can't do that. Because slope on this graph would be the displacement divided by distance. And that is not equal to velocity. The slope only tells us velocity if you're looking at a displacement or position time graph. Time is not on the x-axis here. So what do we do instead? To figure this out, we simply imagine where that wave would be a little farther ahead in time. Let's go back to the simulation. If I want to say, okay, let's choose this green particle right here, and I want to know where is it moving at this moment, I just step forward in time, and let's watch where it went. Okay, it went up. See that? And then if we let more time pass, now it's going down. So the wave shape is progressing to the right, and to answer the question, you have to imagine that wave shape a little bit closer, uh, farther to the right. Here's where the medium ends. The medium begins over there. So particle P has moved upward to here. That's how you answer this question. It's moving up, except it's not moving up. The positive direction is to the right. As the final thing, we have to answer a question, uh, let's see, do part J here. It says, on the diagram, draw an X to get, indicate the position of each particle at the instant represented by the graph. So let's go back to the graph. Okay, this is kind of a mess. Let me just erase. If we look back, you'll see I've highlighted a crucial word. This wave is a longitudinal wave. It's not a transverse wave like this. The particles are oscillating left and right, so it looks something like, maybe like this. There's a compression and then a rarefaction, and then a compression and then a rarefaction. And so we don't know yet where those particles are located, but we're going to draw it in our final part J. Okay, so they've got these particles, this guy, this guy, this one, this one, here, here, here. This particle is located, if we count, this is 0.3. This one is at 0.6. This particle that's marked has a position of 0.9. This one is normally at 1.2 when undisturbed. That's at 1.5. And when this one is undisturbed, it's located at 1.8 meters. So let's find each of these particles on the graph and figure out what their left-right displacement is. All right, first up is zero. The particle whose distance or position is zero meters. What's its displacement? Zero. The graph is an up or down. So this one stays right where it is. The particle located originally, or when undisturbed, when it's located at 0.3, let's find that. Does it have any displacement? 0.3. Yes, it is displaced 0.10 to the right. So let's draw that, 0.10 to the right. 
this one needs to move 0.10 to the right. So it is now located right over here. Let's move this over. How about 0.6? Let's find that particle. The particle normally located at 0.6, that's the undisturbed position, the equilibrium position. It is at zero displacement. The graph is not up or down. So it stays right where it is. This one does not move. The particle whose equilibrium or undisturbed position is 0.9, let's find that, here it is. It has been displaced by negative 0.1 meters. And again, the negative means to the left. So let's move him over to the left. The 0.9, he has been moved over to the left by 0.1. And now I've drawn that displacement. And we can continue in this fashion. The particle located at 1.2 meters will have zero displacement on the graph. The particle located at 1.5 is going to have positive one, uh, positive 0.1 meters of displacement. The particle located at 1.8 is not actually shown on the graph, but we could imagine this line coming back down, and it would be at zero displacement. So it does not move. And look at this. We can see compressions and rarefactions. Here is a compression. That's where the particles are grouped together. Right here, that's a rarefaction. They're all spread apart. And this, indeed, is a longitudinal wave. As our final item, let's look at just the first part of this question in our notes. And this is on, what page is this? This is on page 17. A longitudinal wave travels through a medium. The x-axis shows the distance to each particle when undisturbed. And the y-axis is showing the displacement. The solid line shows the displacement of each particle at 0 seconds. The dotted line shows the displacement at t equals 0.8 seconds. So before we do any problem solving, we can already see that this wave has traveled, the crest was here, and now the crest is there. Energy has been carried forward. How far forward? You just look at the x-axis. This is going to be 0.4 meters forward, is how far the energy has gone. How long did it take for that energy to transfer forward, for the crest to move forward? It took 0.8 seconds. So immediately, we know how to find the wave speed. We have distance, we have how long it took. And so now we can calculate C. What else do we know from this graph? Well, if we look at where two adjacent crests are, from here to here, we could find the wavelength. So if we know wavelength and speed, we could get frequency and then also period by the inverse relationship. Let's look at what the question asks. State the displacement of a particle, and that's just asking us to identify the y value. Look at this right here. The average speed of the particle, is that c? No, particle speed is different. You need distance over time, and guess what they're having us do? They're having us find the distance from the first two parts. You know where it's located at 0 seconds. You know where it's located at 0.8. So you take the difference to figure out the distance it travels. But right here, find the speed of the wave. That's where we use the technique we just discussed. The wavelength, you get, uh, get that straight from the graph. And then frequency and period. So we can use these graphs to calculate quite a bit of information.